It's good to see you all tonight. We are going to get this service started, so if you'll stand with us, we're going to sing This I Believe. Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty, is through your Holy Spirit conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. defender suffered and crucified forgiveness is in you descended into darkness you rose in glorious light forever seated high I believe in God our Father I believe in Christ the comes again 
for I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Jesus' Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the We had a, uh, a little problem for service, so we fired Zach. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, um, he, uh, he did. Punish, punishing us, no. Um, he's got some sinuses going on, and, and even through my screeching, um, I think he thinks it would be worse than mine. So uh, uh, he, uh, he's got some sinus stuff going on, so... Um, last minute curveball. So we're uh, praising the Lord through this. We're going to sing your name. Sing it louder, 
Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this evening again. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come and worship you. And um, Lord, we uh, ask that your hand would continue to be on this service as um, Lord, this offering is taken up. Pray that you'd bless it and use it to further your kingdom. And uh, Lord, just uh, prepare our hearts, continue to prepare our hearts uh, for your word and the message tonight, Lord. Um, we're your, your servants, we're your people, and we yield, yield ourselves to you now. And uh, we just ask and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Fought another fire today, I caused myself Just another brilliant thought along the way I lost control on my own So I humbly bowed and called upon your name You quickly calmed my fears As you rescued me again But God, why do with me. Please open up my eyes that I can see. And God, why are you so good to me? You give me the truth that made me free. The word to me reveals you love me ever still. This I know. are so good and ready to forgive your mercy has no end you gave your son that I might live his precious blood has covered all my sin all troubles come my way you answer me again but God why do Put up with me, please open up my eyes that I can see. And God, why are you so good to me? You've given me the truth that made me free. Your word to me reveals you love me ever still. 
sano You bless beyond all measure I see your wondrous works and all you own Nothing can compare to you, my God And all you've done Jesus loves me, this I know The Bible tells me so Little ones to him belong They are weak but he is strong Lord I am weak but you are strong and God why do you put up with me please open up my eyes that I can see and God why are you so good to me you've given me the truth that made me free your word to me reveals you love me ever still this I know Jesus loves me this I know this I know this I know. Praise the Lord. It's good to see y'all here this evening. Oh no. That's the worst. Not quite the worst. That mall thing. Oh, not very many people laughed at that. Uh, well, y'all can turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. And um, last week we, we got into uh, the employee slash employer relationship um, as we looked at the servant master relationship. Uh, in Scripture, and uh, again, we know that um, the abuse of the servant-master relationship is not condoned in Scripture. As a matter of fact, uh, Scripture never, uh, some, sometimes people think, well, it's in the Bible, so uh, it's okay, and that's not necessarily true. Uh, there's things that the Lord has given uh, to govern um, the affairs of man sometimes, and um, again, it doesn't mean that it's okay. Um, so, but nevertheless, again, we saw a couple rules. Number 33 was as servants, or we can apply today employees or workers, uh, our sincere obedience to those over us should be unwavering as we serve as unto the Lord. And then 34 was on the other side. Masters, or bosses, leaders, employees, etc., must maintain a high regard for their servants or their employees as they lead as unto the Lord. And so, um, again, very important lessons, very important things to remember in light of our relationships on this earth. So, we kind of move beyond that. Um, again, we saw those three different categories of relationships, uh, that with the husband, the, the wife and the husband, children and the parents, and then employees and employers. Now we move into a very important section of Scripture um, that I, I love. And um, again, as we consider love being the, the kind of focus of this, that's why we call it love rules, um, looked at the responsibilities, looked at the relationships, without question, with these responsibilities, with these relationships, there's going to come a tax. Um, every ma married couple in here can attest to that, that inside of your home, inside, and, and, and every parent can attest to that, with all of the charges, and every boss, every employee can attest to this, with all the charges and all the outlines of how we're supposed to act and react and, and how our relationships are supposed to be on this earth, again, without question, the enemy is going to attack that. The enemy is going to attack the wife. He's going to attack the husband. Uh, he's going to attack each category in those relationships that we looked at. Um, so here's, here's the problem. If we're trying to faithfully carry these responsibilities out in whatever area that we, we fit in, uh, we have to be prepared in this. Uh, because if we're not prepared, 
Um, then, of course, the enemy, who is always ready to attack, uh, is going to get the best of us. And again, if you've been married for any amount of time, you know it happens in the, in the, the marriage. Uh, if you've had kids, you know it happens with kids. If you are an employer or employee, you know that it happens in that relationship too. So we're going to dig into this uh, tonight and uh, see what God has. So let's pray. Father, thank you again for this time. Thank you for allowing us to be here. Um, we thank you for the, the music so far. Uh, Lord, the, the, that part of the worship service that we're able to have, uh, just lifting up praise to you. And God, we are so thankful that you love us. Uh, despite ourselves, so, so many times we fall short and we mess up. And uh, the truth that you love us uh, remains. And so, God, we thank you for that. We thank you for the name that's above every name. Uh, our, our God, you, Father. And we, uh, we thank you uh, for just the goodness that you pour out. Thank you for... Um, again, the freedom that we have even to be here now. And so, Lord, I pray you bless as we uh, go through this scripture. Lord, as I present what you've laid on my heart uh, and the truths in this scripture, God. We ask that you would speak to each one of us and that you simply use me as a vessel now. I pray that you're glorified through all of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 is where we pick up. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of Him. His might. Now, let's be clear right off the bat. These are saying that these are God's resources available to us. And of course, we know, many of us know where this is going. Some of you don't know where it's going, but many of us know that it's going to talk about the evil one and the evil one's attacks. So again, the resources that God has given to us that, makes, that he makes available to us are for our use to stand against all the evil powers in this world. As I shared Sunday night, uh, we are weak in and of ourselves. Every single one of us here, um, now there are some that may be stronger minded, may be stronger willed, maybe some um, may be more emotionally stable. Um, but the reality is every single one of us is flesh and has experienced sin and our flesh has experienced sin and our flesh knows the pull of temptation to sin. And so in and of ourselves, every single one of us is weak. We're weak. That's why it's vital to take this section of Scripture and apply it to our every single day, every single day of our life. Uh, in verse 10, again, the charge to be empowered in this spiritual fight, in this battle that we're in every single day of our life, is to be empowered with the same might that Jesus Christ had as he walked this earth, the inherent power of God. So again, every day of our lives, you and I, the charge is to be empowered with the same power that Jesus Christ walked on this earth with, delivering people from demons, healing the sick, raising the dead, raising his own body from the dead. That every single day, we are to be empowered with that same power in the spiritual fight. Now, it may, it may not seem like a big deal, but if you consider how much power that is, the manifest power of God in the form of, of a man, Jesus Christ, doing having power over everything on this earth. That is the kind of power it takes to resist the evil one's attacks. So if we consider that again, every day of our life, if we are weak in ourselves, if our flesh is feeble and we have no hope against resisting and, 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 and you know, faring well in Satan's attacks, then to compare that to the, the kind of power it takes to resist it, it's a large gap. It's, that's a, that's a, it's, a, it's a mighty important resource uh, to make sure that we are living every day with. So think about it like this. The power is available and usable every day of our life. So the power that God lived in, the, uh, lived in a body, the human body on this earth with Jesus Christ, is, is, is available to every single Christian, and it's usable in our lives. And so why is that such a big deal? Because when we go through the storms, and we go through the battles, and we face the attacks of the enemy, we realize just how important that strength is. Because it's real easy to give up. It's real easy to give in. Uh, when, when maybe your flesh has been pulled, and you feel real weak, or maybe you've been pulled so far, and you gave in. And you've sinned, you failed. Or maybe when that attack comes at you or whatever, you, you realize just how desperate you are for God's help and God's strength. In those moments of weakness, in those moments of failure, we realize 
man, I need the Lord. Man, I wish God would just step in. And, and again, we, we need to realize this power is available and usable to us as the children of God. So you say, well, how though right now I'm going through something, right now I'm in the middle of, of this, this temptation, right now I'm in the middle of this attack, right now I'm in the middle of this battle, right now I'm facing this difficult situation, so, so how do I even begin to tap into the power that is available and that's usable? I feel so weak, I feel so helpless, I feel so useless. How can I tap in to the power that is available to me from my, my Heavenly Father? I think we got to do a few things to make sure that we're strengthened with that might. The first thing is this. We have to make sure that we're not relying on our own strength. And you say, well, that, that's a simple thought. That's a psychological thought is that, that if, you don't, uh, if you're not relying on God's strength, then inevitably you're relying on your strength. Um, it is a common sense thing. It's a logical thing, but it's also a very spiritual thing. It's not a psychological thing. There is our own strength. Our own will, our own resources in our flesh, again, mind power, will power, uh, emotional strength, all those things. Um, and then there's the power that is of God that's beyond all of our strength, that's coupled with our strength many times, but it's beyond our strength. So we've got to make sure when we're walking every single day, especially if you're in the middle of a battle, if you're facing something, make sure that you're not relying on your own strength, which of course means sometimes your own wisdom, your flesh is resolved. In other words, I've made it through worse trials than this before, and all I did was this. And again, it is a resource of your own doing or a resource in your own body. Um, you got to make sure that you're not doing that, uh, because I'll be honest with you, I, I feel like in my Christian life there's been times that I have made it through certain trials in my own strength, not truly relying on God's strength, not truly seeking and, and drawing nigh and, 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 and um, clinging to the Lord and relying on His strength, but really kind of trying to make it through myself. And I'm telling you what, it is, it's miserable because it feels like you get absolutely beat up, <laughs> like, you're, you're, like your tail gets kicked, you know, um, in, in that. Now, I'm not saying that whenever you're relying on God's strength that the enemy's not, you know, getting some good blows in. But it's a completely different experience whenever you're, you're empowered by the power of God and then you're trying to make it through things in your own strength. Um, and so we've got to make sure we're not relying on our own strength. The second thing is we must set aside the sin that besets us. And this is a difficult thing because sometimes in, in the middle of our uh, trials or stuff that we're going through, we're not realizing that there's some sin in our life that we haven't confessed to God or repented of. And maybe it's a sin of omission. It's not necessarily a sin of commission. We begin to go down the list of the things that we haven't done wrong, but it may be the things that we haven't done right that are besetting us. That are, that are keeping us from being empowered with God's might. And so uh, we're facing this trial, we're facing these circumstances, the enemy's about ready to wait, uh, wage an attack on us. We've got to make sure that every day of our life we get up, that there's not something that we're holding on to, a sin um, that's besetting us. Because, man, if we're holding on to that and that keeps us from being empowered with God's strength, the enemy's going to mop the floor with us. He's going to take advantage of that sin. So again, if we consider even what we've gone through, the marriage, the home, the job, all the social relationships that we have on this earth, um, we've got to make sure we're being empowered with God's might, not relying on our own strength, ensuring that there's no sin in our life. And then third of all, we must mortify our flesh. In other words, we not, must not give, be given strength to our flesh. Um, and even further than that, I put in there, don't nurture its sinful appetite. I'm telling you this, if your life is consisted of nothing but entertainment, movies, um, TV, and, and, and all those things, and you're not spending any time with the Lord, and you're not feeding the spiritual man, and you're just feeding the fleshly man, every day you wake up, you turn on that, and, and listen, I'm not trying to get on some type of rant or a soapbox about uh, secular music, but Christian music, but I, I, I'll, I will, I'll embrace it. I think that as spiritual people, we should be filling our lives with as much spiritual resources as we can. So I don't, I don't think there's really any need, um, and I'm not saying, you know, I, I've got some nostalgia to oldies or to this or to that, whatever, whatever, you know. What, I, what I'm saying is this, if we realize every day of our life we're in a spiritual battle, and we realize all the enemy's doing is, is he's looking for a, an attack, here, a, a, an open door here or there, we better get, take serious being empowered with the power of God. 
Uh, we, better, we better take serious that we need to be putting everything in our life to, to strengthen our spiritual man and to not nurture the fleshly man, the old man that's supposed to be put to death every single day, that's put to death when we embrace Christ as our Lord and Savior. We've got to make sure that we're feeding and nurturing and strengthening our spiritual man, the, the man that Paul said uh, it, it desires to obey the law of God after the inner man. So we've got, to make, we've got to make sure that we're not um, doing that, not giving strength to the flesh, not nurturing the sinful appetite. Um, and it can happen, again, anyway, movies, uh, re- relationships, uh, music, television, um, all kinds of things, all, all kinds of uh, forms of, of pleasing the flesh. If that's what our life is consisted of, which a lot of America is, just pleasing our flesh. Um, then, man, we're setting ourselves up for a great failure when Satan comes to attack. Um, so we've got to make sure that we're mortifying our flesh, not giving any strength to it. And then fourthly, we must rely on Scripture and the Holy Spirit's prompting in our life. And, and, I, and I know in a church, and you hear this a lot about the power of God's Word and relying on Scripture, and you hear it from me oftentimes if we talk and we have counseling, I'm going to point you to the Scripture, and I'm going I'm to tell you, you need to be in the Word of God, and you rely on it, because we have to, that is our strength. That is the power that God has given to us, the resource of God's wisdom, His manifold wisdom given to us in written form. We have it. And so to rely on what God has said, on God's direction, on God's promises, is essential to be empowered, especially in the day of trial and attack. And again, oftentimes we want the easy way out. We, 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 we want something else. Well, I I don't have t- as much time to spend in God's Word. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Many times people disagree with that, and I've, you know, I've shared this before. I'm going to share it again. We were just talking um, to somebody. Um, oh, our architect. Uh, we went last week to, oh, and pra- this is a side note. Well, well, praise the Lord. Some of you have already seen, uh, but thank you for your prayers and thank you for uh, being sincere in that because God gave us favor. We went today to the City Planning Commission, and I'm telling you what, I was sweating a little bit right at first um, because they were asking some questions. You know, just kind of had to look about them, and, and I, started to get, I started to get in the flesh, and I started thinking, man, these guys, they, you know, and then I was like, I just need to start praying. And so I did. I just, I just bowed my head. I was, I was praying God, for their hearts again, and and for them, and I'm, I'm not joking, I'm not saying it was necessarily my prayer, I think it was all of our prayers together, um, but it was like, there was like a, just kind of a veering, and this one young man that was on the panel, um, when they got done with it, he was, he was like, uh, I have a, a comment and, um, so, and an emotion to make, and he began to talk about the safety of kids crossing the street and all that kind of stuff, some of the things the architect already presented, and um, he said, so I motion that we accept the preliminary plat and the waiver uh, to terminate, uh, you know, to, the waiver to extend butt line, uh, essentially saying they're going to terminate the street. And, and right immediately, a guy said, I second it. And then the, the chairman was like, everybody, let's vote. They voted. Everybody but the chairman said, okay. And I think the guy was just a, a crabby, I'm not trying to say this about, he was just a, a grumpy old man, you know? <laughs> He just, I don't think he liked churches or something, because uh, he didn't even give us a chance. Anyways, uh, I'm praying for him. You pray for him, too. Um, no, um, but uh, it was, uh, praise the Lord. Anyways, back last week, we were sitting uh, to, to get kind of direction from the, the planet, uh, city's uh, director of planning, and uh, so we, that was uh, just kind of get some, uh, again, information and direction on how to approach this meeting. And we're sitting there, and the architect said, um, I said, how's things been going? He said, good. And uh, he said, you know, I, I'm, I've been uh, trying to do something for my own spirit, for my own uh, walk with the Lord. And, and I made a, a vow, or, you know, I just made a commitment, not a vow, a commitment um, at the beginning of the year to not watch television anymore. And uh, I said, oh, wow, yeah, that's awesome. He goes, you know, um, you know, and I made a concession. And he goes, now I think I did the wrong concession. He said, he, he said I'm not going to watch TV, but I'll let myself watch movies. <laughs> and so we're sitting there, and I, I'm just listening to him, you know, and he's talking, and he said, he said so um, what I find now is I'm, uh, I'm spending all my time searching what movie I'm going to watch and then watching movies. 
He said, I kind of defeated the purpose. And I said, so, uh, so what are you going to do? And he said, I think I need to reevaluate my commitment. <laughs> I said, yeah, maybe so. And uh, anyways, I shared with him what I shared with, um, with you guys, our church, years ago. And that started in the youth. And um, it actually, Brother Jeffrey has shared this testimony before. It was actually kind of what the Lord used in his life to draw him closer to him, where he ended up um, uh, feeling the Lord's call in his life. And it was, I just challenged the youth, uh, and again, it poured over to the church, to uh, do a 30-day fast from television. And um, the, the architect, he was like, I didn't, I didn't, you know, take into account on January 1st when I made that commitment that all the bowl games were coming on that day. <laughs> And then the national championship would be the next month. He said, but I held to it. And he said, you know, I, what I realized, I, I really, didn't really didn't miss it. You know, I said, yeah, because when you're engaged in it, that's when you care. But when you're disengaged, you really don't care. And, um, and so he said, I don't have time to, to be in God's word like you're saying I need to be in God's word, to be strengthened. Yes, you do. Just, I, and I would challenge you even tonight. Um, if, you, if you're one of those that said, I wish I could spend more time in God's word, um, Consider tonight, you can come down to this altar and pray it, uh, but having a 30-day fast from television and movies. And I promise you this, you'll find more time with your family, you'll find more time to be able to be in God's Word, to pray. Um, it eats up so much of our life. Um, but again, we've got to make sure that we're relying on Scripture and the Holy Spirit's prompting in our life. But too often, I think we go through our days uh, without a conscious thought of these, these things. That is until we're facing that difficult decision, uh, that difficult situation, or that snare, that temptation. We don't think about these things until we're looking at that failure that we just fell into, or the attack that's coming against us, the storm that we feel like we're in, the valley, the dark valley that we're in. We don't think about these things on a conscious level oftentimes until we're in the middle of the difficult things. And here's the truth. If we haven't been making daily conscious efforts to be strengthened in the Lord with His strength, the chances of us using His strength are a lot lower. So all of a sudden, in the middle of this storm, you wake up, okay, I'm going to rely on God's strength. Not if, not if you haven't daily been doing that. Not if you haven't been consciously daily looking to God in His Word, talking to God, asking Him to strengthen you, asking Him to protect you, asking Him to provide for you. If you're not connected to the power source, then all of a sudden this trial, this great thing comes against you, and all of a sudden you want to plug into the power source and get everything you need right in there in that moment. They're available, but it, oftentimes it doesn't happen like that. Because again, the enemy knows how to attack. He's been doing it for thousands and thousands of years. He's looking for his opportunities, and oftentimes it's those of us who aren't connected to the power source on a regular basis. And all he's looking for is just something to kind of to, to, to open up for him, and he comes in, and that's when he does his greatest damage and his greatest work. So again, every day we have to face, every day in the reality that exists all around us, which is this. This is the reality. Daily, whether we see it, whether we feel it, or whatever, daily we are in a spiritual battle. It's real. And again, the world, the materialistic world we live in, the world of pretend that we live in, uh, full of entertainment and, and, and imagination, all those things, uh, carries us to a different place in our life. But as spiritual beings, we have to be reminded every single day, the enemy of Almighty God is coming against me. He's coming against my family. He's coming against the church I'm a member of. He's coming against me at my job. He's coming against me, and he's going to try to defeat me any way he can because I'm a member of the church that he can't ultimately defeat. But he's going to try to pick off one by one or family by family, however he can, because he's in it to win it. Again, his goal is laid out in Scripture. And it doesn't lessen, it doesn't lighten, it doesn't go along because uh, the, there's money in the bank and life is good. It doesn't go away. Satan's, Satan's scheme, his plan is spelled out. It's there every single day, whether we acknowledge it or not, whether we're prepared for it or not, his plan is still the same. What is his plan? To steal, kill, and destroy every single day. It doesn't stop. It's perpetual. Again, whether we get up every day ready for that or not, Satan's still planning to do that. 
So he's planning to get in there in, your, in, in, in you and your, your spouse's relationship. He's planning to get in there in your, you and your children's, uh, or, or children, you and your parents' relationship. He's, he's looking to get in there any way he can. He's looking to get into your life individually um, to, to, to pull you down, even if you're not married or you don't have kids. He's looking to pick us off one by one if possible. And again, as Peter was inspired to write, such an accurate illustration of Satan as a roaring lion, he's simply looking whom he may devour, whom he can take opportunity on. Now, this is, none of this is to make us fear. This, none, of us is, none of this is to make us worry because the Scripture says, whom shall I fear? If God be for us, who shall be against us? The battle is the Lord. But again, we often get to that place where we begin to rely on our own wisdom, our own strength, our own uh, abilities, all those things, ourself, and what happens? Fear grips us, anxiety grips us, worry grips us, and we begin to fret over things that God can absolutely conquer and control. But again, we take it ourselves, and it begins to wear us out. Again, we've got to be reminded there's no power that's to be compared or can be compared to God. So if, if that's the truth, that's the reality, we would be the foolish people on earth as the people of God, knowing that we have all the power of heaven and earth on our side that is attainable and usable. We'd be foolish to approach every day's spiritual battle without that strength. And again, I, I'm convinced that there's a large majority of Christians that simply get up and go about their days and don't have one thought that that's a spiritual battle. That's a day of battle. And maybe that's you. Maybe you're saying, that's, that's absolutely me. I mean, I get up in the morning, I brush my teeth, I take a shower, I get dressed, I eat breakfast, whatever. Um, I get ready for work and I go about my day and I don't even think about the fact that Satan wants to kill, steal, or destroy my life my family, my church. I don't think about it. I just go about my work day. Me and my family got stuff we're going on. When I'm done with that, I come home, relax, just do whatever, eat supper, do this, do that. Never have a thought about the fact that the enemy of Almighty God is coming for me. So again, we may coast by, we may go day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, and not, not bro, everything seems to be fine. We can handle, the, like I said a while ago, we can handle those small battles, that issue at work, maybe even the struggles at home. We can handle all that in our own strength, but when the enemy really comes, well, he's going to knock us out if we're not being strengthened with the power of God. But that's the amazing thing in all of this, that in God's love and in his grace, he wouldn't leave us in this world, with his enemy, seeking whom he may destroy, without the necessary resources to face those battles. What an amazing love. What an amazing God. That he would say, okay, I don't really love, and this is not necessarily what God says, but in my mind, as a, as a loving father, he, he doesn't necessarily desire for us to stay here. We know that because he's going to take us to be where he is. He's preparing a place for us now. But we're here for a moment, as the Bible says, as, as a vapor. Our lives, they're, they're here for a little, while, a little while and then they go away. He has us here. And so if he's going to leave us here as his light and as the salt, an amazing love, an amazing grace, he says, you know what? I'm going to give you everything you need to face the attacks of my enemy. I don't like leaving you here per se, but, uh, but I do because it fits into my plan because I want everybody to be saved. I'm not willing that any should perish. So I, I've got to leave you here to be my light, to be my body, to accomplish my mission. But as I do that, be assured that I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world, and I'll give you every bit of my strength. And that's encouraging. That's encouraging for us to know that it's there and it's available. So love rule number 35 tonight is this. Every day... We must ensure that we are deliberately relying on God's strength by making conscious efforts to do so. And I would refer you back to those four things that we looked at a while ago to make sure that we're uh, empowered with God's strength. And so every day, I want to encourage you, tomorrow morning when you wake up, think about it. Okay, another day of spiritual battle. If you knew, uh, and Jesus even gave an illustration of this, if, 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 if the, uh, the goodman of the house knew what hour the thief was coming, 
that he'd be ready, right? I mean, the same thing, and it's talking about something else, but it, it, it presents a truth. We know this. If you knew somebody was coming to break into your house, if you knew what hour, what day they were coming to break into your house, would you not be prepared? Or if you didn't know the day, you didn't know the hour, and you just knew at some point somebody's going to break into your house and threaten you and your family, what would you do? You would be prepared every single day. You'd be prepared every single day. I know how I would be prepared, but some of you know how you would be prepared as well. But I, I, I'm telling you this, spiritually speaking, if we don't get up every day and think that spiritual attack that, that is going to knock me and my family off our feet is coming today, if we're not consciously thinking like that and we're not preparing ourselves spiritually in such a manner, then we better be ready. He's coming. But again, relying on his strength is to rely on his word, to stand, to mentally, emotionally, every aspect, spiritually, standing on the truths, on the promises, on the wisdom, on the commands with the Spirit's help. That's how it happens. So regardless of how you feel, regardless of what fear or worry lies within, regardless of what circumstances are telling you, to be empowered with God's strength means I'm going to stand on what his word says. I'm going to walk according to his ways. I'm going to trust in everything that he's told me, and I'm going to do it with the Spirit's power. Doing that is going to set yourself up, and it's going to, to, to uh, enable you to be strengthened with God's, with God's mind. Again, to walk, so, so how does that all work? To walk in the Spirit, in Galatians chapter 5, that's what Paul says. He says, walk in the Spirit, you're not, you shall not fulfill the, the lust of the flesh. Um, to walk in the Spirit is simply to obey the Word of God. Regardless of how your flesh is feeling, regardless of what your flesh is pulling you to do, is to obey the Lord. Again, you may find yourself like me and every, just about every other Christian in this battle, and you say something like this, but it's so hard to obey sometimes the Spirit and resist the flesh. That's when our faith is really put to the test, and that's when the resource of power, of prayer, is really utilized in a great way. And that's when you and I can't act or respond until we're sure that we're being empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. Because it's real easy just to spout off in the mouth. It's real easy just to react in our flesh, in our emotions. Um, But that's not, again, being empowered. So look at the next charge when we move on. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So again, with this charge, it's clear. It's, It's evidently clear We can't stand against the wiles of the devil without putting on the whole armor of God. So again, as I said a while ago, it's a conscious thought. Every single day, we have to consciously be empowered by God with the power that was existing in Christ. Every day, it's a conscious thought. I'm in a a spiritual battle. Every day, a conscious thought. I must put on the whole armor of God. So a few things here. First of all, it's God's armor, which is comforting. Because again, it's God's strength, his, His armor, he is stronger than Satan, of course. Again, this is part of being strengthened by his mind. Not only that, it's part of the resources that he's provided for us as his children. He's given us the armor, the necessary things to face this battle with. And not only that, but it's part of his kept promise, as I said a while ago, to never leave us or to never forsake us. But again, it demands a response. It's a choice presented to us. Put it on. It's the charge. It's imperative. You, you must put it on every day. It's a battle. There's a battle. Satan's coming, roaring lion. He wants to destroy, kill, steal. He wants to do all those things. And so as my children, what I'm telling you to do, I'm giving you all the resources, but you every day have to make sure that you're putting on the whole armor of God. And I want you to look again, the reason behind putting on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand. What does that mean? Withstand, stand firm against the wiles or the schemes of the devil. The reason for putting on the whole armor gives us insight to the fact that the schemes are there and the attacks are coming. Again, if he says, you need to put this on so that you can withstand 
the, the, the schemes, all, the, all the, the crafty ways that Satan's going to come at you every day, put on the whole armor because they're coming. As I said a while ago, if we don't get, every day, get up every day prepared for the spiritual battle, then Satan is going to knock us out because it's very clear in Scripture that if he says you need to do this so that you're able to withstand it, that they are coming. So this means it doesn't indicate possibility. Well, maybe Satan might come at me. Maybe Satan, no, 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 it's not possibility. It's absolute certainty. The schemes, the attacks are coming. And Scripture tells us our only hope, God's strength, God's armor. Every day. So the outcome is evident. If we aren't strengthened by God's might, and if we don't put on the whole armor of God, we can't and we won't stand or withstand or stand firm against Satan's schemes. And maybe you're there. Maybe that's where you are tonight. He said, that's exactly where I feel like. I feel like that I'm facing an attack of Satan himself, and he is kicking my tail. That's what I feel like. I feel like that there's nothing that I can do. He just keeps coming, and it keeps, keeps getting worse. Maybe you're there. Maybe it's a sin. Maybe it's a temptation. Maybe it's a struggle. Or I said maybe it's a worry or a fear, an uncertainty. And Satan is just driving and driving and attacking and attacking, and he's wearing you out in that area. And the enemy's scheme is working against you. Let's said a while ago, he's mopping the floor with you in this area, or maybe several areas. And you're there, and you say, you know what? I, I feel like I'm losing this battle. Or maybe beyond that, maybe you say, you know what? Satan's come at me. He's attacked me, and, and, and I try to do it on my own strength, and I, and I felt like I was trying to use God's strength, but now, I, now I'm thinking, man, maybe, maybe I was trying to face it in my own strength. And I feel like that I've lost. Not that I'm losing, but I've lost this attack and I feel defeated. What do you do? I know I've been there before. What do you do? That the enemy's attacked you. You're down, discouraged, depressed, whatever. You feel, again, defeated, feel like giving up, feel like giving in. What's the use? The armor is there. The power is there. Your circumstances, the, the fact that you feel like you've lost or the fact that you feel like you're losing doesn't change the truth that the power and the armor is still there for you to put on. Think about that. Oftentimes we get to that place and again we, we feel like, man, I, I, I can't. No, you can. It's a choice, just like it's a choice every day to put it on. Or to disregard it. So be, power, be, be empowered with his, his strength. And, and we have to realize that the enemy and who the very clear enemy of God is. And, to, and our enemy. And that, that's what verse 12 gives us insight to. So it says the schemes are coming from, from Satan. You've got to put on the whole armor to face it. And he explains here's why. Because, verse 12, the word for means because. Because... We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of, of, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So in light of all that, the word wherefore, in light of all that, take unto you, the, he reiterates, the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Here's the tough part for us. We can see each other. We have relationships with each other, with, with, with flesh and blood, with other people, spouse, children, co-workers, whatever, friends, family. That, that, that's, that's our interaction in this life. And so when the attacks come and the enemy comes out of us, it comes at us, we forget sometimes who is behind it all. See, part of the enemy's scheme is to attempt to focus our battles on people. A lot easier to do that. It's a lot easier. Somebody makes you, somebody gets you upset in church. It's a lot easier to get upset at that person and say, you know what? I'm just not going to talk to them anymore. I'm just not going to go to church anymore. 
Now, is that God's will? Is that anywhere in God's word? No, but that feels better. I feel like that I can handle that. I can feel like I can handle this trial by not seeing them, by not talking to them, by not resolving it. I just won't go, or I'm upset at this circumstance. I just won't, I won't do that. There's nothing in God's word that says that. That is a good example of us relying on our own strength, fleshly strength, fleshly wisdom versus God's strength being equipped and, and walking in the spirit where he says, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one, uh, one another daily so much more as you see the day approaching. It's saying, you know what? I, I'm, I'm upset at this person. I'm upset at this circumstance. I'm, ups- I, 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 I'm feeling like they don't lie to me. I feel like this, that, that, that. Instead of saying, okay, God's word says if, 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 if I've been offended, I'm supposed to go to them and tell them and, and, and restore and reconcile that relationship. But no, I don't feel like doing that. I don't want to do that. And Satan will mop us. I've seen people leave the church because they try to handle it in their own strength versus being obedient, walking in the spirit and relying on God's strength. What was that again? Obeying God's word, clinging to God's promises, doing it God's way. But again, the enemy's scheme is crafty. It's good. It works. He makes us see those people that, that again, what ha- look, at your, look at your relationship in your home. It seems like sometimes if you've been married for longer than a year, they're the enemy. <laughs> it can feel like that sometimes. God very clearly gave to us through the Apostle Paul writing to the Ephesians here, look, you got to understand, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. There are two sides. There's light, there's darkness. There's good, there's evil. There's God's side, there's Satan's side. There's no in-between. And you can't cross over, I mean, back and forth, I mean. You can't cross over from evil to good. <laughs> it's closed, the door, no. Um, but we have to realize if we can zero in on people and begin to feel ill willed towards them, then the fundamental breakdown of a vital commandment of loving your neighbor as yourself opens the door for our reliance on our flesh and not God. So, again, if we can zero in on that person, that spouse, that coworker, that family member, that friend, whatever, we can zero in and they become that the, the focus in this trial, in this attack, uh, in this attack, and we begin to feel ill will towards them, then that command that God says, love your neighbor as yourself, begins to break down. We don't, we don't follow it. We don't keep it. And again, that's when we start to stray from being standing firm on God's word, being empowered with his might, and, and operating in our own strength, our own wisdom, our own resources, relationship skills, whatever. And then from that point forward, it weakens our defense against everything else. See if that doesn't happen. Trial happens between you and your spouse. Trial happens between you and your, your, your child or, or at, at, at your job. It happens at your job. Something goes wrong. You begin to get frustrated at your boss or your employees or whatever. And wh- how, how does that work? Sometimes, most of the time, it pours over into the home. It starts even affecting things in, within the church. Like, huh, that's interesting. It's almost like Satan knew how to push the dominoes. That's exactly right. Because it all is connected to, to the same thing. If it's not dealing with a person, then his scheme is often a personal weakness within you, a temptation. And it can be anything. It can be worry. It can be fear, anxiety. It can be lust. It can be covetousness, whatever. His scheme is distraction through any means possible. So he'll come at you. And if he can get you worried about the future of your job and it consumes you, or he can get you, he can get you anxious about uh, things that you can't control, he will do that every single day. As long as you try to uh, uh, rely on your strength and handle the situation on your own, he will do that every single day. Because he knows that if he keeps pounding that, he's eventually going to wear you down and you're going to give up. You're going to quit. You're going to fail. You're going to falter. So he'll do it as long as it works. And many of you know this is true, too. If he comes at you, and man, you fail, that attack works, you mess up, but then you, you, you say, you know what, I'm sorry, God, I, I failed you, I, I messed up, or, or man, Satan really got me down, and got me discouraged, I didn't feel like doing anything for the Lord, but you got back right, you repented, you, get, you got restored, you got back in right fellowship with God, you're standing firm on his word, being obedient, walking the way that you should be walking, and you're strong, 
you, if you've been there, you know this is true. You need to be prepared because if it worked once before, Satan's coming back again. And he'll try that again. He'll try that same avenue. He'll try that same avenue of lust, of covetousness, of worry, fear, anxiety, whatever, uh, anything. Money, materialism, he'll, he'll try whatever. But if it's worked before, the chances are he's going to come back again and try that same avenue in your life. Again, things falling apart, uncertain circumstances, excess, what have you. Those things, the focus turns to those things, the fundamental breakdown of the vital commandment occurs. To love the Lord your God with everything you have. And that opens the door for pleasing the flesh versus pleasing God. That then weakens our defense against subsequent attacks as well. So what's the deal? Here's the deal. It's imperative that we stay reminded that the battle isn't with flesh and blood. That the battle is with the clear enemy of God, Satan. And as God uses people like you and I for his will, he desires that, guess what? The, the counterfeiter himself, Satan, that's what his desire. Not, his, not, not only of his own people, the people that are still his, who haven't trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but he will use God's people if God's people will not be empowered with God's might and will not be protected with the power of God, with the armor of God, he will use us as well. And if we'll be honest about this, we've all given into our flesh enough to admit there's probably times that, he, that Satan has used us. Whether it was our, with our mouth, with our attitude, with something that we did, something we didn't do, causing that person to stumble, causing them to question Christianity, causing them to, to struggle in their walk. You say, I don't think I've ever done that. Have you done that in your marriage? Maybe in your home? Again, we, we have to make sure that we realize, man, Satan wants to use us any way he can, any way possible. And again, it's not as though he owns us, not as though he possesses us or anything like that. But it's that he has schemed in such a way, and he is so crafty and so subtle to see when we are weak and to be used to aid his cause is something he's really good at. And that's a nauseating thought. I don't know about, about you, but it, it's kind of like this. Uh, you know, we, we read about people in our military um, uh, being traitors and stuff. And what happens, I don't know about for, for you, but for me, when I hear about somebody being treacherous uh, and, and, and being a traitor to our military, which is ultimately to our to us, to, to, the, to the nation as a whole, I'm like, severe justice needs to happen. That's, that's unacceptable for treason, for treachery. And so for me, as a child of God, to think that I, I, I've, I've put myself in a situation to be used of the enemy to attack God, his plan, his body, it's a nauseating thought to me. But again, I, I realize in my life, unfortunately, there's been times that have happened. That's why constantly remembering that Satan is the enemy, not man. Remembering that we must put on the whole armor of God every day, relying on his truth, obeying his truth to have his strength. That is the key. And so number 36 tonight, as we close, is this. Daily remember that Satan is the enemy of God. Therefore, he is our enemy. Remind yourself of that every day. The enemy's real. The enemy of God is real. He's, he's, he's our enemy. Every day he's coming at me. Even if I don't see it or know how he's doing it, he's scheming. He is looking as a roaring lion how he can devour my life and everything associated with it. So again, regardless of how things feel, Regardless of what things look like, remind yourself, Satan is the enemy. And when we remind ourselves of that, we realize, I, am, I have no chance against the enemy of God in my own strength. I have, I have no hope. I, I, have, I have no, no way to, to, to deal with the attacks, to deal with him by myself. So that should be a reminder every day to be empowered with God's power. Put on the whole armor of God. We're not going to get into tonight, but we'll, we'll, the next time we begin to look at each part of the, the armor of God. Many of you have done this before, you're familiar with it, but uh, maybe it'll be a refresher, maybe it'll be an encouragement to the season of life that you're in right now. And so I want to encourage you 
Uh, I want to ask you to stand. And um, I'm going to pray. And after I pray, they're going to play some music. But I want to encourage you. Maybe, maybe tonight you were reminded of something. Maybe tonight you were ch- challenged with something. Um, and, and maybe tonight you just need to come and say, God, I'm sorry. I, I, I have not been consciously putting on your arm. I've not been empowered with your power. I've been trying to handle things with my strength, and, I, and Satan's been eating my lunch. Or maybe you're not there. Maybe you're like what I said a while ago. I don't have enough time to be in God's word like I need to be. Maybe tonight you need to come to this altar and say, God, I want to make a commitment the next 30 days. I'm not going to turn on the television. I'm not going to watch a movie. I'm going to spend that time with you so that I can be strengthened for the battle. And some of you may be in that battle right now. Maybe, maybe you're facing something right now, and it is, it, like I said, it, it's eating your lunch. You can't let go of it. I would encourage you to do whatever necessary. Pray fast, fast from television, like I said, to draw near to God. Tap into the strength that's available to you to make it through this trial. And whatever, however God has spoken to you, and I would encourage you to respond. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for your word. God, thank you for the conviction and the challenge that you've given to me in this. Uh, Lord, the reminders, uh, God, of the many times that I've fallen short because uh, of relying on, on, on even my own strength, even if it has to do with biblical knowledge or uh, knowing what things are right, and, uh, but still not actually and deliberately looking to you and standing on your word and, and walking in your spirit, Lord. I pray that you would move tonight in each of our lives. And Lord, that your word would have accomplished what you wanted it to accomplish tonight. I pray that we would respond in the right way. I praise you for this. Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. As the music plays, I want to invite you to come. Praise the Lord. Thank you all again for me. And I pray that you, this was an encouragement or a challenge to you, whatever God's will was. Um, and it's good to see Brother Ricky here tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And I uh, saw Miss D back there too. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. 
pre pretty amazing uh, modern technology and medicine. So uh, just a couple weeks ago, Brother, Li Brother Ricky, Brother Lee, Brother, <laughs> Brother Ricky, Brother Licky, um, <laughs> we're not going to go there. Um, <laughs> couldn't hardly walk across the front here, you know, um, and now uh, he's, I can already tell a big difference. And uh, so thank you all for your prayers for both of these and I continue to pray for them. Uh, don't forget, there's no outreach tomorrow evening, um, and then uh, Sunday morning, Brother Tim Lee. So again, please invite, uh, on Facebook, we, we put something out there, an event, um, so if you're on Facebook, I encourage you to go and share that. I uh, want everybody that's possible that doesn't have a church home to come uh, and hopefully hear the gospel and uh, that their life will be transformed. So if you've got a neighbor or you've got a family member or you've got a friend uh, that you've been inviting, tell them it's a special event, it's a special speaker. Uh, he's got an amazing testimony. Uh, share whatever the Lord lays on your heart, but do everything you can to try to get uh, people that don't have a church home to come and hear uh, the gospel this Sunday. Again, you never know what God's going to do. Uh, I know my family is changed um, because of men like him, specifically him uh, personally because Rochelle uh, got saved in 1998 uh, when he was at our church speaking and, uh, you know, thought she was saved. I thought she was saved and I uh, guess she had heard the gospel several times before, uh, but he came, and again, it's not necessarily about a man, but about how God works and uses different people in different ways, and so you just never know how God's going to do that, so um, please be a part of that. Please invite, 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 and uh, we'll see you guys then. Amen. Let's pray. Oh, yes, ma'am. This weekend. So please pray for Ms. Grizel. She's heading down to MD Anderson in Houston. Uh, for her checkup, and so please pray for a clean bill of health for her, safe travels and, and clean bill of health. So let's pray. Father, thank you again for this time. Thank you for um, all that you do for us, Lord. Thank you for providing every resource that we need in this life. Thank you for making your power available to us, uh, within us, and for your, the armor that you've provided for us. Um, help us every day uh, to, to be mindful of this attack. Help us to be mindful every day. Uh, and, and make the conscious decision to trust in you, to rely on you, to turn to you, um, and to obey you as we um, walk through this life and endure the battles that Satan throws against us. Lord, we ask you to take us home safely tonight, and um, Lord, help us to be effective in uh, inviting people, witnessing to people the rest of this week. Uh, that way we could see a great turnout on Sunday of people who don't have the, a church home, maybe lost, uh, that they could hear the gospel, and many would be saved, Lord. Again, we just want to do your work and want to bring glory to your name. So we ask your help in all this. And again, we thank you for this time. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.